Hello, my name is Alex, and welcome to Real Sniper Tactics. My background then, I spent seven years in the army, three of which as a sniper, including one tour of Afghanistan as a number one or a shooter. In this video, we'll be covering combat. It's finally here, the one you've all been waiting for. When to fire, when to hold, and most importantly, who to kill first. In the first half of the video, we'll be covering offensive actions. First things first, we'll be covering the order of precedence or establishing a priority list. There's a whole host of enemy combatants out there in Daisy, so we need to prioritise who we're going to deal with first. As a sniper, your number one on the hit list should always be enemy snipers. They have the same capabilities as you, and they're trying to use every tactic you know on you. Therefore, we need to make it our number one priority to eliminate any enemy snipers as soon as you discover them. If you're on a raid, for example, leave your friends to deal with a small arms fire and make it your mission to eliminate a hostile sniper should you discover one. Next on your list, you should be hunting anyone with belt-fed weapons and explosives, such as machine guns and C4. These people are able to produce massive amounts of destruction in a very short space of time. Therefore, we need to minimise the threat to ourselves and our allies by neutralising these combatants. Last but not least on the list, we have small arms. This covers anyone on the battlefield, pistols, shotguns and melee weapons. While these guys are still a problem, they're easily managed and can only do damage to a single person at a time, therefore minimising their threat. The next tactic we'll be covering is moving targets. Hitting a target while they're moving is significantly harder than hitting a stationary target. As snipers, we work off the principle that as soon as a target is moving, there is only an 80% chance you will hit them. And every 100 metres, over 200 metres, there is a 10% increase that you will miss. For example, if there is one target moving from left to right at 400 metres, there is only a 60% chance of a fatal shot. That's not to say it's impossible, it's just a lot harder to do. Either manoeuvre closer or wait for the enemy to stop. Finally, for offensive actions, we'll be covering where to aim. Armour does a great job of protecting the human body. However, most sniper rifles will have no problems chewing through these like hot knife through butter. Therefore, when firing at moving targets, to maximise damage and minimise chance to miss, we will aim for centre of mass. This increases your chance to hit, as the torso is an increasingly larger size than a head. However, when a target is stationary, you should be aiming at what we call the sniper's triangle. This is a triangle between each ear and the base of the neck. Hitting an enemy in this area will sever the spinal cord and kill an opponent in one bullet. It also negates the risk of hitting an enemy in the helmet or faceplate and puts them down for good. Next up, we have defensive actions. First up, we have defensive positioning. Unlike the zombies, most of the enemies you'll be fighting are not brain dead. They will have played games before and no doubt raided bases in DayZ. When positioning yourself in a base to defend it, choose unlikely positions within these bases. Standing on top of guard towers to defend your base is a surefire way of getting your head taken off. Try positioning yourself on staircases and unusual positions within the base and make sure to maximise the use of murder holes. And finally, our last tactic is fallback positions. Never only have one place to defend yourself from, you should always have at least one fallback position, so that if your first position takes too much heat, you can quickly switch in an effort to continue to destroy all aggressors. Use these tactics wisely to ensure your victory, and good luck out there.